Today we are looking at the transformation um, of, of early slavery. Well, we're going to start actually a little bit before it, then get to the transformation of early slavery and ultimately to race-based slavery and what slavery became in um, the United States, which was, a, which was a very different thing than what it started out to be and also very different from uh, pretty much the rest of the world and how uh, slavery was used. So one of the things as far as if we just look at um, the background first because it's important to um, you know understand slavery as a, as a whole this slavery was not you know obviously unique uh, to what becomes the United States uh, slavery has been around uh, since Mesopotamia one of the first civilizations um, so in that sense it's not new um, we'll see that there's some differences and changes in how Sla what slavery becomes um but so but the the, the general let's look at it, just um past cultures and slavery right and 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 like i said all of them had it to varying degrees mesopotamia rome greece uh slavery was common usually slavery took place as uh captured warriors if you had a fight um and you won whoever you captured even sometimes if you lost if you captured people they became slaves and um well actually there was a couple they became slaves or you could then uh you could have a ran ransom them either way you made money off of them right so they either get sent back or they become slaves there was also um, debtors, uh, debt slavery, and and this of course was if you owed lots of money, you could um, essentially put yourself into slavery, and then your debt would be erased when you were done with your term. Of, and again, it's a term, usually seven years. Should we should say it's five to seven years. It totally does depend on the, the amount. All right, so if you go five to seven years, uh, and so, uh, you know, slavery is called slavery, debt slavery, but it is more like an indentured servant uh, contract. Here's the messed up part with some of some places, like Mesopotamia and a couple others, you could actually sell off family members for your debt. <laughs> Sex to be part of that family. Members for debt. Again, at a term service. None of these, the uh, captured warriors didn't, but debt slavery um, did because it was often citizens, their own citizens, right? So a Mesopotamian citizen uh, could put himself into debt slavery. And so the idea was that they wasn't permanent. You're paying off the debt. The person took your debt on that you're working for and then you work it off and then your, you know, debts are clean. Um, it also was used as a form as, of punishment. And again, could be usually term service. It was like your, uh, your, your, said your punishment for whatever disobedience or crime, desertion was usually death in the military, but there were other uh, military uh, penalties for the things that could put you into to some form of slavery. Okay, so these are usually reasons. The the most common, which was number one, captured warriors. So what's significant about this is ultimately it means that slavery in many countries, so Mesopotamia, Egypt, um, I mean, most of you're anywhere in Europe, if you look at it, and, and the Middle East, you had it, there was, it was a diverse population that were slaves. Right, it was not about race outside of, for example, Rome. Romans were the best, but uh, anyone else's was, you know, I guess in that sense about race, in the sense anyone that wasn't Roman was inferior. 
But outside of that, but the Greeks thought that too. I mean, a lot of country, uh, countries and nations thought this. If we're the best, we're superior, everyone else is inferior. Oh, sorry, my dog has decided. To... Alright, we'll see how long before he decides to bark again. Sorry about that. So, the the key with these, and we're going to look at um, African slavery too in a minute, was that uh, in all of these... There we go. I wanted to... That uh, and, and each society diff differed and and what they did and how they did. But the reality was is that for the most part, and it didn't make conditions good or anything, slaves were still regarded as human and consequently with that they got certain rights. Um and, and it and it varied. I mean it wasn't like there was a ton of them, but that there were some rights that uh, that that varied. Okay, so you could have a uh, right to own money. To purchase your freedom. To um buy goods. Sometimes I said they had free time, their own time. Anyways, it, it depended. It totally depended on what. It still was bad conditions. It's, it never, rarely was slavery a completely positive thing uh, uh, yeah, ever. <laughs> but they were, the, the key being that, um, well, there, you know, certainly there were, some had rules to protect, protect uh from killing, others did not, right? So you couldn't kill your own, your uh, slaves that, or some had from protection, from beatings. It just completely depended on the state, on the country, on the the nation, depending on who it was. So you, you, it it completely varied. The key though is that they had some rights. And we see that time and time again, that in the law codes, there always was a variety of laws that were both for the slave owner, but also uh, some protection for the slave. Um, again, sometimes it was minimal, sometimes it was more, but ultimately that was present. <clears throat> so slavery wasn't something new. Slavery had been used. It was seen, um, you know, uh, honestly as normal and almost expected. It, it wasn't something that at, at any period during this time that, you know, people would have questioned said, what, you know, why aren't, why are you having slaves? Um, and, and so that, you know, wasn't a surprise that way, but it was different. And we'll see that the, the early colonial period uh, did do things differently initially. Um, let's look at the background to African slavery as well, because they did have slavery before European forces came in and started uh, enslaving them. Um, but again, it's going to follow more of the traditional structures, which are very different than what the U.S. does and with the Atlantic slave trade and, and all of that. So you have, um... Different, how Africa was, was you had various different kingdoms. Oops, that was weird. And um, towns, districts, kingdoms, states, towns. It varied. You had, you had large kingdoms. You also had smaller um, uh, communities that had a leader but wasn't a king, you had, uh, and then you had smaller towns and villages. And the fact was, is that uh, some were at war and they didn't all get along and they followed the same structure, captured warriors, became slaves. The and again, it depended on the area, how the treatment of slaves and whatnot. Although, 
some uh, slaves, uh, what they're, I guess the difference is, is that a lot of times it was what their, their, um, let's put it over here, their jobs, not really jobs, their, the labor was not hard labor, you know, backbreaking labor, which is what happened. And, and the U.S. was not the only one to have slaves do hard backbreaking labor. Um, certainly not. There were, there's plenty of, of, of uh, countries that put slaves, even if the slaves had certain rights, they still put them to hard labor. But in Africa, while you did have some hard labor, it wasn't always hard labor. In fact, in some kingdoms, Right, that's important because it's not, it's not all. In some kingdoms, slaves did administrative work. And why? Because um, in one of them, the king said, king felt they would be more honest than nobles. Than the, no the nobles. Because the nobles, he said, right, they wanted more land or wealth and the slaves did not you know could not have that so you have if you have if you have them being instead of doing hard labor all the time but instead you have those that are going to be more administrative work they did have a chance some had chance for freedom Some were adopted into the family. So after a term service, they became family members. Okay, so the, and, the, and the point is, again, none of this was ideal or idyllic. It was still slavery. The the point just being that uh, in most places, and even again in the colonial, colonial period, they followed the suit of the rest of the world. It was only later that we changed how it was going. That slavery was, uh, you know, even if it still was this harsh thing and people um, could be treated very poorly, there were still certain rights, and more importantly, they were still regarded as humans. And we're going to see that when it shifts to a race-based slavery, you dehumanize the individual to justify what you're doing. Um, and, and that kind of changes the game, uh, as well as focusing only on one single group of people to be slaves, suggesting that they're meant to be slaves and, and, and no one else is. Also completely changes the game versus... Um, you know, whoever you capture in war. And that, of course, that does... We try... We'll see. We tried that, too, for a while. Um, so there's several things we tried. We didn't just jump to a racial uh, system, slavery system, a racial slavery system, sorry, uh, right away. We actually... The, the early colonial period uh, and then transition with the United States did initially follow... Um, well, the colonial period did initially follow the, the system that the rest of the world had done. But it's going to switch. So let's look at, at what... Um, oh, and so... Actually, we're not done with African slavery in the background there because we want to talk about outside forces. So this is the internally what the various uh, African states were doing amongst themselves. Um, and you have several outside forces that are going to come in. Uh, and do that you have the Europeans and the Ottomans okay and the Europeans do with them first I guess I should have <laughs> the Europeans would um, travel to the coast and dock their ships the Portuguese were uh, some of the earliest, but they uh, you you had uh, multiple other groups quickly following suit. Um, 
and they dock their ships, go to the um, to land, go to land, and do a quick a quick raid. So kind of like the smash and grab, run in, grab things and people, run back to the ship before anyone else tries to challenge you too much. And so then this was, it was uh, what you got were goods, foods that they could find, and people. And the whole reason of this was to avoid conflict in battle. And this worked for a while. Let's go here. But ultimately, the coastal region, you know, sucks, really sucks initially for the people living on the coast because they're the ones fully being targeted here. And there's a couple things they did. They, some left coastal uh, towns and villages. Left. They also then uh, got more prepared to fight back. And ultimately, what the most did was that they made a deal. Right? We don't want to be raided anymore. Stop raiding us. Okay? So, stop raiding us. And instead, you know, take from our neighbor. <laughs> From these, you know, uh, whatever disliked uh, state they suggested. Right? We we're, if we fight, you know, we're in a war with this group. Take from them. But, you know, they are. So one would be that they offered, as how do you do this? Because the whole point of the, you know, smash and grab was to avoid dealing with fighting. Is they offered safe passage... Through their lands besides offering safe passage through their lands the other option was is that they would uh, trade with them so they would take the traditional slaves and, and of course how that worked is you know traditional warriors captured or even uh, women and children later but especially start off with warriors captured they traded with Europeans and the trade was for weapons um, and, and, and other goods course weapons because if you're fighting then it helps with that and and so the, for a while this is what they did the problem of course was that with making a deal this attracted more Euro Europeans and in fact uh, they started setting up um, towers and bases on the coast to protect what they saw as their area so that they basically were having Europeans lay claim to the different coastal parts of Africa for which they're saying we are trading here and this is the slave port um, and when that's what they became a lot of them became slave ports Um, and, and that's going to be a problem with attracting more Europeans, too, because, of course, then um, the demand uh, is more than the supply. And if the demand is more than the supply, what do you do? They, um, so what do? Well, one, they started making the uh, 
local uh, groups working with the Europeans. What they did is while working with the Europeans is they did they started making raids. Okay. And they and then they started making raids and capturing and taking whole villages. Which would include, you know, men, women, and children. This is also going to have a much more what we'll call devastating effect. Um, this, all of these is going to have a significant effect on Africa and structure of states and kingdoms. Like the next biggest thing to have such an impact is going to be the scramble for Africa where Europeans ultimately redraw lines and put various groups together that had been fighting for centuries um, as and claiming their stake. So this, this was a big thing. Now, it wasn't just the Europeans, as mentioned, it was also the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans while uh, the uh, Europeans here will go my horrible drawings that nope that doesn't even look close that doesn't look close either but sorry that's a horrible drawing I can't draw the Europeans went through the coastal regions here and the Ottoman Empire went into here and went back out overland. So they went, the Europeans went by sea, Ottoman Empire went by land. But the same thing as far as what they were doing was trading with various groups for, for African slaves. The big difference between Europe and the Ottoman Empire, because they certainly followed a very similar structure initially. Uh, what was the thing? Because the Ottoman Empire did do raiding in order to convince to trade, was the demand. The Ottoman Empire stuck to smaller numbers. Of slaves, which meant that they, I mean, they went for quite a long time. It was long term slave trade. But the difference was is that they never reached the height of demand and numbers that Europe, that the Europeans did. And so the Europeans, and we see this in, in the, with the Native Americans in the colonial period when they come in and the English and French are, and the French are wanting fur pelts, especially the French community. And what does it do? The demand uh, goes over the supply. It forces Native Americans to hunt the beavers in that area to basic extinction levels. And so then they start having to travel to other people's territory to get them, which then leads to conflict and warfare. Similar idea, just with people, which of course has other devastating effects than an animal. But it's the same idea, okay? And that's what was happening. Our empire was just not as, um, um, they, their, in, their demand didn't like continually increase in super large numbers. The Ottoman Empire also pulled slaves from all over the place. So again, the Ottoman Empire is going to start following a much more traditional structure um, because they're going to continue to to pull slaves from everywhere and not just one location. All right, so that's the, the structure with Africa. We'll come back and talk about um, the, oops, there we go. as it increases in the colonies, because it doesn't start out that way long term. And in fact, uh, let's see, colonial labor. Now, they, the colonies had tried um, to enslave, and essentially they 
tried three groups and were successful with the last one. The first one was Native Americans. Right, and they used them for, you have Spain, um, and the and the English, especially Spain, but but the English uh, tried to use uh, the Native Americans for crop labor as well. Um, Native Americans were attempted to be used, but you had high death rate. Just refusal to work. It was easier to run away and not be found, right? Whether they went back to their tribe or somewhere else. This was their land, so they kind of knew it um, and, and had the ability with that too. So you had a high, super high death rate, refusal to work by some, easier to run away and not be found. The reality is what it was is that they had too many rebellions and resistance because it's not like we didn't try to enslave them it just didn't work the next group though you had was indentured servants and they eventually moved closer and closer to trying to enslave them as well and where you see that um, initially right you had the five to seven year term And this was very much connected to um, the, the, well, what they needed was that they were supposed to provide the basic needs. And um, this, I mean, what this was, there's, there were contracts for this, but it did vary depending on, on the individual, you know, how, how that qualified. And the, all of this, the reason for reason for the need, right, if you will, was cash crops, specifically tobacco. And so you have these plant, you need plantation labor. I mean, it was the sugar, if you're looking early, early period, it was sugar plantations. In the Canary Islands. Later in the colonial period, it was also tobacco. So tobacco is the cash crop that structs, that sets up a plantation style labor, which is why you need the labor um, for for doing so. Um, and there was also they're going to have later. It's going to be rice. It's going to be another big one. Um, it's actually worse than tobacco because it's standing in the water and the low levels. Um, but, but, but it's, it's, it's this, if you have plantation labor where you're having large, large crops, you need more labor to be able to do that. So indentured servants were structured on the idea of you had the term of service and it was connected along with the development of the cash crop, the head rights system, which said that if you brought someone over right you got 50 acres of land if you paid for yourself you got the 50 acres of land um and then they were indentured to you right for the term of service when service was over the expectation was they got 50 acres of land as well and this was done early on because they had plenty of land to give and they were trying to entice people over and ideally some tools and then the concept was with these things here right they started own plantation and brought, prot, <laughs> brought more indentured servants over. Right, so that you would be, it was a cycle that took place and then you would be successful. And then once you've started your service, new people would come over and then they would be successful. So that was the system. Now what happens, 
is that um, <clears throat> many realize, hey, they're getting out after seven years, but I could save money if I make the terms longer. So uh, it will say attempts to transition to slavery. All right, so they do uh, try by making the terms longer. And uh, besides trying to make the terms longer, Jesse, sorry, my dog likes to bark apparently. And besides making terms longer, um, they they created, well, there's lots of ways they actually made terms longer. So it wasn't just that you initially signed for longer. Instead, they were sneaky about it and what they were trying to do. Uh, and so they had all these new rules about um, if you broke these various rules, um, each gave you like extra terms of service. Rules that could extend service. So for example, if you ran away, which tells you of course that there wasn't a lot of people running away early on, uh, as, as indentured service continued more and more did, which does suggest that the conditions got worse. <clears throat> so if you ran away, you, what you would, uh, end up paying time, we'll call it for, um, a couple things, the lost labor time. The cost of recovery, which could be um, at the, and then lost labor time, cost of recovery, and then the time you were gone. So let's say you you ran away for and you were gone for three months. Gone. This could end up because of all of these would lead to one to one and a half years extension, extended time. Right, so it's crazy. I mean, this wasn't the only one. Uh, there was, you couldn't hunt on owner's property or other people's property, but right, often they didn't feed them enough. So, if you wanted to eat more and actually feel full, you had to uh, do so. Oh, if a woman had a baby, even though she was usually working up till right when she had the baby and soon thereafter, they would take six months added time. And often this was connected to, you ended up uh, having, uh, feeling like you had to or having a relationship with the uh, owner then they got pregnant by him and then had to stay for a longer time or worse were raped by them got pregnant and then that was penalized for that rape they, essentially they were penalized for being raped uh, which is just crazy you could petition to get a different owner but then they would extend time and it was it was just didn't work now remember with indentured servants through all of this, they're still English citizens. So, um, we'll see, uh, Hunt had a uh, baby, poor work ethic, which is somewhat subjective. Um, you know, that, so that they started saying, well, if you're being lazy or breaking things, we can add more time talking back to owner. Right, so these, and what you should hopefully notice is these are similar to some of the stuff that happens with slavery in that extent. So what happens is the fact of the reality is, is that they're still English citizens and they start going, hey, uh, you can't treat us like this. So, and, and I guarantee this was very much an attempt to shift it into slave labor. It doesn't work, and in fact, is that one only recognizing they're still English citizens and start protesting. It culminates 
with Bacon's Rebellion. And a realization and also a scare for uh, plantation owners about the labor force. And they certainly take this fear from Bacon's Rebellion into how they create and structure slavery as it continues. So what happens is in Virginia, this is in Virginia in 1676. Uh, you had the governor, um, William Berkeley. Uh, he um, definitely took advantage of his position and he would give the best land to friends and family. And why was this was important is because the reality is, um, as time continued, the head right system worked great for a while. As it continued, though, they started running out land or the land that was left was not really fertile or was in dangerous territory, it, uh, just not feasible. And so the reality is by 1665 and onward, freedmen, right, indentured servants, freedmen, freedmen, uh, and that were these were indentured servants that were now free, rarely got all the land promised, and it was often not good land. And and uh, you know, so it, it ultimately forced them to uh, be tenant farmers. So you, you, you work for, uh, it, what, what's frustrating is you work for the, as, as a, as a uh, indentured servant for this person for five to seven years, maybe even a little bit longer by the time that, um, you, they, you know, with, with, what then they start adding stuff and whatnot. And then you get out and you're like, okay, sweet. At least I get my land. At least, um, you know, I'm going to get to have, to have my own plantation and try again and then you get out and the reality reality is is that um you end up not getting it you get land um that uh tenant farming where you so you you, you basically are paying rent to former owners sorry about my dog <laughs> he's not gonna stop completely apparently this morning uh, and so you have tenant farming and you're paying and you're paying rent to the for the former owner, your former master and, and how frustrating because you you got crap, you got screwed over essentially. And then and that's what happened. They got screwed over big time. They were promised something, they work it and then they end up not getting it. If they do get land, it was, um, if they do get land, it was, it was poor land. Right, no water source, which you kind of need for crops, or what was seen as Indian territory, which was dangerous, and so that all created a problem. Okay, so what happened with Bacon's Rebellion is you had the tensions of all of this land stuff already going on, and then you ended up having... Um, uh, an escalation in uh, Virginia between um, the various uh, settlers and freedmen and the Native Americans in the area. And you know, granted, uh, the, well, all the times it was the settlers that started it, but what it did create was that you had increasing rates by the Native Americans on homesteads that were um, on the outskirts, right? And those, the people that were on the outskirts were the freedmen mostly.
because they had been given the crap land. So they, uh, Berkeley's response was, okay, well, we're going to increase taxes to uh, pay for defense plan. And so all everyone paid taxes, including the others. And then he built um, essentially a, a fence for a fort, if you will, um, defensive fort around the town. So why was this important? Because it was around the town. It did nothing for the people who actually needed it. And they paid taxes for it. So it pissed them off because uh, we just gave you money and you said you were gonna help us and all you did was take our money and then build a fort around the town. That helps us not at all, we're still vulnerable and you've stolen our money, essentially. So uh, a newcomer, Nathaniel Bacon, uh, ends up, and he wasn't a freedman himself, so he comes in, he, and he's going to get the freedmen together. He was not a freedman. He was, he was never an indentured servant, but he rallies them to um, this idea of, of having uh, freedom and demanding um, better conditions. So to the idea of freedom and better conditions. Okay, and with this, um, he what he did is they said that we would get um, we're you know we're gonna need to recruit people and arm supporters to force their agenda, because they did send it to Berkeley and he kind of laughed at them. And what he promised was immediate freedom for all servants who deserted uh, in order to, to also get uh, indigenous servants and, and slaves to leave. And said that, you know, used it played up on their grievances. Okay. Um, that, that, you know, they had been paying taxes that have gone to the rich, they'd been taken advantage of, and then and thus are oppressed and have debt while the, the wealthy uh, prosper. In September of, um, September of 1676, um, that they actually successfully drove uh, Berkeley and his men out of uh, Jamestown. So they occupied it for a while. Um, but of course, it's going to be problematic um, with what essentially that that what's going to come from that. So what the one of the things they did is they burned Jamestown to the ground. in an attempt to what they hoped would discourage um, them retaking the town, right? Oh, it's not worth it now. And then the other problem, Bacon dies of illness a month in to holding uh, Jamestown. This leads to division and dissent, because he was really kind of glue. They also bring reinforcements, show up to support Berkeley, and ultimately they, the 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 English, um, the governor, and English take it back. Several of the uh, of the men were were hanged. Okay, and this this ended Bacon's rebellion. 
But the, the, the significance of this was several things. One, it's going to be the start of the end of indentured servants. Now, it's important to note the start. So it was slow. It, it wasn't like immediately, no more indentured servants. No, no, it was a slow transition, but it really was the start of that transition. There's a, it also created a fear of rebellions, and they're gonna this is gonna hold over to slavery and that fear, even though it, you know they don't have it. At the start of the end of the indigenous sermons, fear of rebellion, you start, again, it's not the only thing, of the shift to African slavery, right? So what, what ultimately, right, the two, two types of forced labor has been failed, the Native Americans and now indentured servants. Both of those have failed, um, from what they were attempting to do and eventually it's going to shift to slavery so why does it shift to slavery it's, it is um, several reasons so what you have um, with this with this labor was the realization that they needed to move away from as many indigenous and, and to about the the move away from indentured servants wasn't it was Bacon's rebellion but there was also less people coming from England to be indentured servants because the economy had gotten better so you people weren't as des were not as desperate as they were before Okay, so that was one reason. You had uh, Africans, that early Africans that had been brought over had a really high death rate because of diseases and other things that way. So um, the mortality rate had begun to decline. Right, meaning less people dying when being brought over or the other would be this that they're living longer so they aren't less people are dying when they're coming over or they're not getting diseases and dying like it was it also is going to become a cheaper option prior to this transition African slaves were significantly more expensive than indigenous servants. What's going to transition is that, that they're going to have a, a monopoly. Um, they lifted the monopoly. So in 1698, uh, Parliament lifted the monopoly um, on the slave trade. So, uh, lifted on the slave trade that the Royal African Company had. This meant that you could now have competition between companies and of course meant that the price for slaves went down and that played an important role um, in that this also created a mass surge of number of slaves brought over Right, and if you have a lot more, then the price also goes down that way. So, but it increased significantly. I mean, if you get an idea, in the 1650s, around 300, um, and by 1700, you had over 13,000. 
and by 1750, you get 150,000, um, which shows you certainly by here how much of a slave based society this especially the south was was establishing all right so that was why um they began to increase in number let's look at early conditions there was no in the earlier period in the 1650s to 1670s there wasn't uh, a strong systematic um uh or consistent actually even before that you know bef in the in the early 1640s you don't have um specific strict rules um going on they're going to they're going to come uh at, they're going to add to them as as it goes so not a singular structure for slaves, and we're, we're going to look at the rules in just a minute. In fact, what you ended have is many uh, functioned like indentured servants. So either they had, they were freed, because a lot of times the general were, were belief freed after a period of service. For many, the belief was is that you know slavery was was you know for a while, but then eventually that were they were they were freed, or they bought their freedom. All right, so that you had this ability to be seen they more as a human. We'll see how this works actually with how even the the free black population in that area started to go. Um, but said by the freedom, they often were able to earn money and own property stuff right not land before while they were slaves but other things and you could also work on the sides so that you could be able to you know buy stuff which also suggests that the work wasn't always horrible although again working in the rice fields would have been pretty bad conditions <clears throat> and so that this is very very early on and, and because the reality was they didn't really know it wasn't race based at this point was the key. It was slavery. It was slavery like in indigenous servants, like the Native Americans in the attempt to make them work longer. Um it it's going to transition to that and we'll see how. But it it wasn't always considered a lifetime and it wasn't um seen as a race thing. And how we know is because of of what you had with successful uh black freemen. And women, um, but there were there were more men than women at the time. They could <clears throat> own property and land. They could own slaves. They could sue in court. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, they could be part of the government. Informal. For a minute. Um, they took part in took part in society. And one example of this was Anthony Johnson, um, who owned about 250 acres. So here example. He owned about 250 acres of tobacco plantation and had at least one slave. When his neighbor actually tried to lure that slave away, Johnson went to court and won damages and the return of his property. Um, which shows you, I mean, he he won his case. The fact that any that the authorities, the court, sided with uh, a, a black freedman shows at this time that they were still given certain rights and seen as people and having the ability to do this. Because later, even as a free black individual, you have no rights in the South especially. And that's going to be a systematic change to dehumanize um, 
African Americans, Africans and African Americans as they become African Americans in the process. With with the shift being black means slave, white means free. That's really what it's gonna come to in that racial structure. So early on, we tended to see more of this. Now what's gonna happen is that there's a series of laws that are going to laws that are going to be introduced. That's change this. I know you're right. Early slavery was not. Uh, um, it was not. It was. It was. It was bad. It was not always good either. Just like um, indentured servants, right? You had the rice was the worst. Um, so I don't. I don't want to. You know, suggest that the, the conditions weren't crap. Um, but the fact was that it was much more like original slavery was in the rest of the world, and we're and then we changed that and we made the conditions worse as it shifts from to a race based slavery conditions also get worse in the process so you have the laws that are going to be indentured servants change this time let's look at a couple of them um there's several here it also shows the population this is a good site i'll, I'll put the, i'll post this up for you guys and it shows the increase uh in in population black population so one early on 1640 1660 they changed the custom law when status changed to servant for life uh, 1660 to 1618, you have laws further restrict black, uh, freedoms and legalize different treatment of blacks and whites. This one, um, okay, so this is important, uh, because this is definitely a reaction to Bacon's Rebellion and also an increase of slaves. This, of course, is important because it's, it, it, it signifies that. Um, so the 1662 is a big one. 1667, the baptism. Yeah, here. Okay, so those are 1662. You have... Um, Virginia decides that any chi child born to an enslaved wow. um, person, any child born birth, uh -huh, born to an enslaved person is also a slave, right? So you're shifting to this idea of uh, you, you're, you're, you are now a slave for life. So that's, that's a new, that's an important one. The other, uh, wrong thing. Right. 1667. 1667. Baptism. Does not free you as a slave. Right, they're saying, no, you can't use religion as a condition for getting out of it. 1672, this is an important one. It becomes legal to wound or kill an enslaved person who would resist arrest. 1672, legal to kill any slave who resists arrest. <clears throat> And then you have, um, here you start having restrict Jesse. Shh. Sorry again for my dog. You can't be quiet today. 1680. Um, you have the ability of meeting. So this is rights. 1691. You have marriage, making sure that. So this is important. You're starting to see 1691. Yeah. This limits freedoms. This one is interracial marriage. Restricted. And blonde banned. This is important because right, this is now establishing a clear line between whites and blacks as free and slave. They're also going to, 
um around this this whole time what you also have um changed and they they put it where is it they're they're typable 1642 um and 16 1668 is probably the best with that but you have 16 42 and 1668 those are about tie um the the fact that they're taxable and that's important um because with all of these what it's establishing is that there's going to be a clear difference i put that i guess i'll have to put that here we'll just do it here 16 so you have two different time periods right 1642 16 1668 1642 1668 black women are taxable for labor this is important too as in the sense of establishing a clear line between race because what it suggested is there were still white women indentured servants But they were not, they call it tithable, taxable. Only black women. And the reason for this is it started to delineate white women servants were domestic help. Black women slaves were field labor. And so again, you're having this delineation between work for women based on race. Okay, and then we have keep going up. You also have the one, there's one other important one, 1662. They put that on here, 1662. Oh yeah, enslaved women. I wanted to talk one more thing about that. We put that one on. Okay, uh, one of the other important things with the 1662 one that I wanted to point out. This was the point, it changed, They they changed the whole structure of patrilineal society. All right, so we'll come back. We're going to want to talk about that one a little bit more. So 1662 law, if you're born to a slave woman, actually what it, what it basically is saying is that your the mother's condition determines your condition. If your mother is free, you're free. If she's a slave, you're a slave. This is the exact opposite because it's supposed to be patrilineal society where the father's status can determine your status. So they, why do this? One, it was because then it, there were no questions on status of mother or who the mother was. And it also meant you got uh, that it encouraged, unfortunately, rape and and uh, or yeah, rape and and any other type of, because if it produced children, it also encouraged them where they encouraged individuals to get together to produce children, essentially making women for breeding. Because uh, children would be free property to owner, right? They didn't have to pay for the kids. So it encouraged rape or it encouraged black women to be seen as essentially breeders. And there, you know, this this really hurt women's. That made them more valuable 
and at the same time have less rights and be more in danger in the process. So that was an extremely important one. All these are important. What all these laws do, and actually I'll put up that website so you can see it. All these laws do is they slowly began to change the way that slavery uh, was going in the early days to create, let's put five here. All the laws as the number of slaves increased, right? Their purpose was to slowly uh, establish a difference between the white and black population where white meant free and black meant slave. <clears throat> the other thing that it was meant to establish was of course, uh, it, it, uh, made, they, it made conditions worse. So obviously slave for life, They took away no. They took away all the rights that they did have. They um, increased working hours and conditions. They, you know, limited uh, gatherings, and and this made conditions worse for both slaves and the free black population. And that's important too. A lot of these, even if you were a free black individual, you now were super limited in your rights. Make conditions worse, no rights, uh, which included voting, uh, going to court, suing, um, physically made physical violence. Okay against the black population. And, and so all of these conditions and structure, what it does is it's, it, it eventually what it led to is the transformation to um, total slavery and a race-based slavery oh, and, and physical uh, violence, both just killing as well as the general punishment for, um, you know, whipping, uh, individuals. It was meant to uh, establish the plantation elite as fully in charge. And then what they did by separating this right is that they, the poor white population they weren't, they actually had more in common really with the slaves than they did there, but because they established as a race based condition, then white meant free black didn't, it put them in a, a higher status. And then the, the wealthy, essentially the plantation elite could use this, uh, to, um, control them. I mean, that was really the point. What they did is they made them overseers. It was actually really smart so that they would identify with white plantation elite, even though they really had nothing in common because all of this, right, was to separate clearly uh, white versus black. That's why the interracial marriage got banned. They didn't want anyone, they wanted it to be separate. It's why they made laws as far as separating the freedoms, clearly establishing that if you were born by, uh, if you were born into a slavery, you stayed a slave. It was all an attempt to establish and allow them to remain fully in charge. And in the process, what it does, and so what poor white population ends up being overseers, which puts them in a position of power and control over the black population. Um, and they identify with white elite over the slaves. Um, and then using violence uh, as control. 
Because we certainly don't have any other incentives now um, because they've taken away all the rights and potential other incentives that you could have done and creating a full base system, but more importantly, also essentially establishing slaves as subhuman. This is the difference that of what happened. This is the key difference of how conditions got so bad. And when the, the colonial states the, the basically shifted away from what most slavery had been anywhere else by making it racial, by making it race based, by dehumanizing, by making conditions horrible and removing all rights in that sense, it completely was a new type of slavery that was focused on one group of people as as a saying that they were not really fully they were not full humans. They this was their this is what they were supposed to do and that this one group had full and complete control to do whatever they wanted because they were property and and not right that they were property not humans. And this was happen because of creating that system. All right, we're gonna talk a lot more about slavery, the Atlantic slave trade and all that when we get into the South. This is just that transition and how it got, okay? And, 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 and that's the key is even when the conditions, like I said, slavery was never good and indigenous servant work was never good, but it was a whole lot better in the early periods for both of them, for indentured servants, and then it got worse, never as bad as slavery, but that's why they rebelled because they were still English citizens. Africans didn't have that luxury. They were not citizens. There was nowhere to run off to. They didn't even speak the language initially. And so while at first you have early treatment of much like indentured servants and they did have rights and you could become a freedman and, and live a good life, the fear from Bacon's Rebellion, the structure that was going on ultimately, um, and the realization that they've been trying for ages to try to get a, 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 labor, a permanent labor force this one they were able to mold into doing so by creating a system where white was free black was slave and harsh conditions that controlled every aspect and and set up the poor white southerners to support the elite um all of these things like went into place to allow for these conditions to happen and for this control to remain um but it, it ultimately took like I said making slaves subhuman and fully property over actual people with with at least some rights that really differentiated then uh, slavery in the Americas versus slavery elsewhere. Um, again, so we're going to talk more about slavery. This is not the end. This was just looking at the transition and how it got to there and why. Um, we'll be looking at the Atlantic slave trade, the Middle Passage, uh, and really the southern slave states as they develop, which this is the start of that. The, when it shifts to this, this is the start of the southern slave plantation system, um, and it's only going to grow from there.